any props if anybody would like. Sometimes it's nice to have a blanket close by. You can just grab something off the couch. And I always like having a block. So you can always grab um, a block if you have it or something that might look like a yoga block, like a book or something like that. So welcome everyone. My name is Melissa and I will be guiding you through a 45 minute all level yoga practice. So as we move through our practice today, just a reminder to listen to your body. If any stretches are not working for you, you can always skip them and you can always come out of them. So let's begin our class today in a comfortable seated position. Feel free to sit on that block or blanket if you would like. Legs can be crossed. You can always extend your legs out in front of you. And then let's start with a gentle release for the shoulders. So we'll take a deep full breath in. Draw your shoulders up, back, and down. And then breathing in, take the shoulder up, back, and down. And one more time with the breath. Let's breathe in and then let's breathe out. And then letting that go, just come into stillness here, closing the eyes. And we'll take a couple moments to connect with our body and our breath. And as you breathe here, just observing your connection to the earth. So maybe just feeling the edges of legs, edges of feet grounding and connecting. And then also feel the sitting, sitting bones grounding down. Engage your core. Lengthen your spine. Lengthen the back of the neck and reach out to the crown of the head. And then let's drop in and connect to the rise and the fall of the breath. And then lengthening the breath you inhale and lengthening the breath as you exhale. And then maybe encouraging the exhale to be a little bit longer than the inhale. And then as you breathe here, just feeling how the breath freely flows one into the next. Without any thought, the breath moves seamlessly and the breath flows continuously one into the next. And then if you would like, you could set an intention for your time on the mat. And then intention really could be anything that you would like it to be. Maybe to clear the mind of thought, to keep the breath flowing in and out. Intentions are a nice way to connect us to the practice and to help make the practice our own. Coming into a gentle neck stretch. So we'll start by lowering the right hand down to the ground to the side of the body. Left hand sweeps up and over. Reach for the right side of your head. Take a breath to lengthen and soften your left ear to your left shoulder as you exhale. And then we'll just breathe here. So you don't want to force the head. It's just a very gentle suggestion of the ear to the shoulder. Gently release, we'll realign. Left hand lowers, right hand lifts. Begin to lengthen and right ear to right shoulder as you breathe out. And then just try to breathe here into that neck stretch. So just inhaling deeply and exhale deeply. Realign back through center. Let's take that right hand down to the ground and left hand will sweep up and over. And then breathe here, let's float up. Left hand lowers, right hand lifts. And then side to side for a moment. Try to lengthen your spine as you inhale and lengthen your spine as you exhale. Maybe each time that you stretch to the side, imagine that you could reach your fingertips to the other side of the room. So really reaching up and out of your waist.
And come up into a neutral spine here. And then let's make our way forward. We'll come into table. And then as you come into table, maybe grabbing a blanket to pad your knees. So have a little support here. Let's take our knees, our hips in line and wrists and shoulders are in line. And then feeling the fingers stand wide. So really pressing and grounding through your index finger and through your thumb. Let's begin to take the right hand up and in, or take your right foot up in between the hands. And then we'll just take a moment here to bend and straighten your front leg. And then as you move with the breath here, so you can have your hands on blocks for support if the ground is feeling really far away. As you bend into that front knee, just make sure that your knee and your ankle are in line. So we just want to make sure that our knee isn't moving too far forward here. You can always bring a little bit more distance between that front foot and then that back knee. Take a moment. We'll begin to straight front leg and then folding over for a moment. And then this brings us into a variation of half Let's Ardha and then Manasana. Breathe in here. Let's come forward. We'll bend right into that right knee and then let your hips come forward and down. Maybe try to be on the upper part of the knee. That tends to be a little bit softer part of the knee, a little bit fleshier part of the knee. Let's return back to table. We'll take that right knee to meet that left knee. Last foot flows up and in between the hands. Begin to bend and straighten your front leg. As you take the stretches on the second side of the body, just noticing if the stretch feels very similar. It may feel very different one side to the next side. Let's begin to straighten that left leg, folding forward for a moment. Let your spine relax. Let your head relax and release. Breathe in here. Let's float it forward, back into that nice hip flexor and so as stretch on the right side. So just letting your hips Come forward and letting your hips lower down. Let's begin to reset. Make your way back to table top. Working with cat and dog, we'll create a little bit of a circular movement here. So draw your hips to your heels and then begin to float yourself forward. Almost imagining that you could push a marble forward with your nose. You're going to kind of glide along the mat. Coming up to a back bend, press your hands down, round through your spine, and then drop your hips back to your heel. Let's let the nose float forward, heart floats forward, and then as you rise up, inviting that back bend, hands will press down, chin to chest, rounding, and then hips to your heel. Let's begin to flow with our breath for a moment. Coming into a neutral spine here. Let's re reset to a plank pose. We'll work with a high push up. And these can always lower in plank if you would like. Working with space, let's lower all the way down to the mat. Hands will glide out in front. Elbows in line with your shoulders. And then maybe reach for opposite arms here just to make sure that the elbows aren't too far from one another. Breathe here into that nice low back bend. Maybe press your hands down. Elbows lift up. 
gently wrap your elbows in towards one another, bringing you into low cobra, bhujangasana. Arm can straighten, coming into seal, reach out to the crown of the head. Lower down to the mat as you exhale. Let's take a deep full breath here and then pressing into a downward facing dog. As you come into downward facing dog, allow for a little bit of movement here. So it may feel nice to bend one knee to bend the other knee. And then relax your head yes and relax your head no. Let's make our way into a forward fold at the top of the mat. And then a little bit of movement in your fold also. So maybe bend one knee and then bend the other knee. Head relaxes yes and head relaxes no. Hands to the right. Coming into a gentle side stretch. Try to press really firmly through your right foot and your left foot. Come back through center, back into fold, hands to the left. And then reaching from the right waist, we'll really try to lengthen here through the whole side body. Reset back, forward fold. Take a half lift here, fold forward, and then rise up for mountain pose. And then drawing your hands into your heart space as you exhale. So let's work with a nice stretch for our spine. So we're going to sweep the hands up and then have your right or have your left wrist reaching for your right hand. And then we're just going to cross those legs. We're going to take our right foot off towards the left. Take a breath to lengthen and then let's draw those hands off towards the left. Maybe encourage your right hip forward and then also encourage that right shoulder forward a little bit. Come back on up. Legs stay just how they are. We're going to switch up the grip through the wrist and the hands, and then hands to the right. Try to feel really grounded through both of your feet. You don't want to be too heavy in one foot and then lighter in the other foot. So try to create this even distribution of the weight. Come back to center. We'll gently release the wrist and we'll release those feet. Changing up the grip this time, let's take a breath in. Right wrist reaches for that, or right hand reaches for your left wrist, and then take your left foot to the right. Let's begin to lengthen, and hands off to the right. Almost create a little bit of a sensation that that right hand could pull your left hand to the right. So just moving you a little bit deeper here. Realign, change up the grip and then hands to the left. And also try to feel that right hip pressing off to the right side of the room. So just kind of send that hip off to the right. And gently realign. So we're gonna release those hands, reset our feet. Coming into one shoulder roll here, take a breath in, shoulders up, back, and down. Hands behind your body for yoga mudra. Fingers will interlock, palms will tuck. Take a breath to lengthen, folding forward as you exhale. Try to relax the fronts of the shoulders and just noticing if that can be moved deeper into your shoulder stretch. Gently release hands to the low back. Release your hands down to the ground. Let's take a half lift here. We'll take that flat back. Fold forward and then rise up for mountain pose. And then hands will move to your heart space as you exhale. Hands will reach up, take a full breath here. Forward fold, hinge at your hip. Half lift here. Plant your hands and right foot floats back for a runner's lunge. Begin to bend and straighten your front leg. So we'll create that very similar movement that we worked with at the beginning of practice, but a little bit more intense this time because that 
back knee is off of the mat. If you wanted to make it a little bit easier, maybe hands on blocks for support, or maybe that right knee lower down for support. Last straight in the left leg, fold over for a moment. To deepen the stretch, maybe draw more weight into your left foot. So hoping to lift the left hip up. You can also draw your right hip forward and then pull your left hip crease back a little bit. Let's come back, runner's lunge, left hand lift coming to your twist. And then as you take runner's twist with each in breath, feel your spine lengthen. On your out breath, allow for your twist to deepen. Reset back for a runner's lunge. Engage your core, rise up for a crescent warrior. So in crescent, try to feel that the right leg is really active. We want to feel ourselves pressing firmly through the heel, firmly to the back of the knee, feeling the leg active, engaged, Bringing off of your foot, we'll work with crane. We'll come into Bali Kukasana. So it's gonna float ourselves forward. Find your drishti. Find that one spot to focus your concentration, focus your awareness. And once you find that spot, not letting the eyes shift at all. Back to Crescent Warrior. Feel your hips and shoulders squaring to the front of the room. So you may have to draw your right hip forward, draw your right shoulder forward, and then left hip back, and then left shoulder back a little bit. This time we are going to float forward similar to cream, but a little different because we're going to pull that knee up and into our chest. Fingers interlock, reach for the front of the knee, and then pulling that knee in for a moment. Try to feel really grounded in your left foot. So we'll press firmly to the inside, to the outside. And then notice your body's natural tendency. If you tend to roll in, maybe you tend to roll out. Let's float it back. Coming into warrior one. So warrior one is just a little bit different from that crescent because the back heel is lifted, or the back heel is grounding down rather. So you have that heel pressing down, press firmly into the outer edge of the foot, breathe into the calf stretch, and then also breathe into the hamstring stretch. We get this awesome stretch for the whole back leg. Sing in warrior one, but we'll work with a variation of reverse. So right hand can glide on the right leg, left hand sweeps up and back. Try to keep that left knee bending and moving forward. So body's natural tendency is to straighten the front leg a little bit. So let's keep that knee bending, moving forward. Flow back on through, warrior one. Left hand on your right leg. And then you could also take a bend if you'd like. So hand can glide down. You can also wrap the arm around your low back. Reach for the other hip crease. Find your half bind. Let's begin to realign. We'll float ourselves back. Warrior one. Hands will lower. Take that runner's lunge. Right foot meets left in a forward fold. Grounding into your right foot, left foot flow back, bend and straighten the front leg. So if you wanted to have more of a stretch here, maybe bring a little bit more distance between your front foot and back foot. So that's just going to lower your hips down a bit more.
Right leg will straighten, fold over for a moment. Let's come through for a runner's lunge. Right hand lift, runner's twist. And then with your twist, try to keep that back like super active. Sometimes we forget about it and we tend to bend the knee a little bit. So just keep that like very engaged on your twist. Back to a runner's lunge. Engage your core, rising up for crescent. Feel the arms really active. So feel the arms bring the ears. Fingers are active. Reach out to the fingertips. Feel the palms face one another. Forward, last transition into crane. We'll try that Bali Kakasana pose once again on the other side. So balance poses are great. So strengthening for the standing leg, strengthening all the muscles through your foot, ankle, through the knee, through the whole entire leg. Flow back into crescent. Let your shoulders relax from the ears. So you want to create some space here between the ears and the shoulders. Feel the shoulder blades moving down your back. Last come through. Similar to crane, but we're going to draw that knee up and into our chest and our stomach. Strong connection to the core here. Let the tailbone tuck. Feel the navel move back and up to the spine a little bit. Transition to warrior one. Reconnect with your breath here. Let's breathe into the stomach, ribs, chest, and then releasing from your chest, ribs, and your stomach. Let's take that left hand down the left leg. Work with reverse. Warrior one pose. And then as you take this one, you might feel that that left is kind of moving to the back of your mat. So gently draw it forward. Same thing with your shoulder. Left shoulder forward a little bit. Reset back. Warrior one. Right hand down your left leg. Left hand up and back. Realign, let's release back, find warrior one, hands lower down, runner's lunge. Step back into plank, let's work with that high push-up pose. And really fanning out the fingers, maybe peek down to your hands, make sure that fingers are still wide, pressing ground through all the parts of your hands. Lower down, chaturanga, let's take an up dog here, so we'll use our breath. Open the chest, open the heart, downward facing dog as you exhale. Working a little bit with wild things. So for wild thing, if you have any wrist and shoulder sensitivity, you can always skip this one and meet us in the next posture. Right leg will reach to the sky. Let's bend the knees, stack open through the hip. Flip your foot over to the other side of the room. And then we're going to reach that top hand up. We're going to get this really nice back bend. We'll get this awesome side stretch. Let's reset back into a three-legged dog. And then float that foot through and we'll work with a warrior two pose. In warrior two, feel your feet really grounded here. Press firmly through all the parts of your front foot. 
ground firmly through your back foot. And almost create a sensation that you could pull your feet in towards one another. So legs are really active, feet are really active. Reverse warrior, we'll take that front hand up and back. Let's try to reach from the right waist, lengthen through the whole side body, arm, fingertips. Come back, warrior two. Right arm to right leg, lateral angle. And then maybe lowering your hand down, working with extended lateral angle if you would like. And then trying not to collapse here into the bottom shoulder. Create a little lifting in that bottom shoulder, a little bit of lengthening in that bottom shoulder. Let's come back on up, back through warrior two. And then working with a pyramid pose, or um, triangle rather, so we're gonna straighten that right leg, hip to the back of the room, Right hand reaches and stretches forward. Once you can't reach any further, let's lower that hand down. Working with triangle, chicken off and off. You may want to use your block here. Maybe imagine your body in between two panes of glass. Move forward to balancing half moon. You may want to have hand on hip. Left begins to float forward, and then right hand comes out in front, lifting that leg up, lifting that hand up. Flex your left foot. We want our left toes to point off to the left side of the room. So getting this nice opening for the hips. You can stay here, maybe bend your left knee, reach for your left foot, coming into the bind, working with sugar cane. Let's float it back to warrior two pose. In warrior two. Feel your hands reaching and stretching in the opposite direction. So the hands don't actually move, but feel right hand reach forward, left hand reach and stretch back. Windmill your hands to the earth. Let's find our way to runner's lunge. Step yourself back into plank. Core is engaged in plank, so we want to feel our tailbone tuck. Navel back and up to the spine a little bit. Let's lower down, chaturanga, up dog, and then press yourself back to a downward facing dog when you're ready. Let's try that flip on the other side to work with that nice back bend and that nice side stretch. Last leg begins to float up to the sky. Let's bend, stack and open. And then flip your left foot off to the right side of the room. Breathe here. So we're gonna feel that left hand reaching, stretching forward, hips are lifting up. Breathe into your back bend, breathe into your side stretch. Float it back, three-legged dog, and then step it through, opening up for warrior two pose. Breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. So try not to breathe through the mouth at all. That will help to keep the mind and the body calm and relaxed. Reverse, left hand up and back. We have lots of little muscles between the ribs, so try to breathe deeply, find length and find space there. Warrior two, lateral angle. Maybe lowering that hand down, find your extended lateral. And then trying to create a little bit of a twist here as well. So that feeling like when we're in triangle, we feel that top shoulder rolling back, bottom shoulder under, top hip back, bottom hip under. Let's float it on up. 
back to warrior two pose. Last leg will straighten, hips will go back, hand reaches, stretches forward, hand lowers when you're ready. We'll make our way back to triangle. And imagine that you could see yourself. We'd like to create some triangle shapes here. So let's create a large triangle through the legs and the ground. Create a triangle through the left arm, side body, and leg. Moving into balancing half moon pose from here. Float that right foot forward. Relax your right foot. And then maybe bind if you would like. Let's begin to release that one. We'll transition back. Find your way into warrior two. Try to feel the breath flowing in and flowing out through the nose. Try to lengthen in breath, lengthen your out breath. Windmill your hands down to the ground. Let's take it to runner's lunge and then walk your left foot to the left edge of your yoga mat. So both hands are on the inside of your foot. Right foot steps forward. So it's going to step to the outer edge of your, the right side of your yoga mat, making your way into a forward fold with your legs wide. Option to stay here. If you'd like, you can work with a yogi squat pose. So first squat. Wider the feet, sometimes the easier the stretch is. So just make sure that you're listening to your knees. Our knees should never hurt. We should never feel a pulling or a stretching in the knees at all. Let's release that one. We're going to transition back into a forward fold. Draw your feet right underneath your hips. Let's take a half lift here. Fold forward and then rise up for mountain pose into the heart space as you ask. Yeah. And then let's work with a balance pose called yogi toe hold. So if you want, you can always use your wall for support. Right hand is going to reach for your right foot. So we're actually going to take our two peace sign fingers and our thumb. Reach for your big toe on that right foot. Your left hand to left hip if you'd like. Staying here. You can try to get that leg out in front of you. You can try to take your right leg off to the right side of the room. Maybe your left hand to the left side of the room. Maybe gaze off your left fingertips. Breathing here. So it's, we're trying to concentrate. It's so easy to hold the breath. So let's just try to breathe in and breathe out deeply. Come back to neutral. So we're just going to reset those feet and reset the arms. And then we'll try that one on the other side, see if it's easier or more challenging. Staying here, leg flows out in front. Maybe the left foot to the left, right hand to the right. Gently reset that one. Let's take our feet a little wider than hips. Arms are locked, side to side. Let's take our feet right in line with our hips. We'll take a deep full breath in here. Hands reach up. Fold forward as you breathe out. Halfway lift and plant your hands. Let's take it back to the plank. We'll take that high to toes. Connect with the breath, feel the breath flowing in through the nose, feel the breath flowing out through the nose. Lower down, chaturanga, we'll take that up dog here. Press back into down dog as you exhale. Knees will begin to lower, table top. Sweep your feet to the right or to the left. We're going to come down for seated. 
And then as you come down to seated, let's kick the soles of the feet to touch. Knees will come away from one another. You can always sit on the edge of the blanket if you would like. Let's take a breath here. Feel your spine lengthen. Fold forward as you exhale. Maybe with your elbows and carry your knees out to the sides of the room a little bit more. Let's begin to come on up to a neutral side. Help of the hands, knees together. Legs come out in front. Shake the backs of the legs out. Coming down onto your back from here. As you come down onto your back, hug your knees up and into the chest. Maybe arms, hands around knees or shins. Little bit of rock to the right, little bit of a rock to the left. Knees will begin to release off to the right. And we'll come into a spinal twist. We'll work with Supo, Matsi, and Drasana. You can gaze off to your left shoulder if you would like. Allow for your eyes to close. And then just breathing here. Feel your left shoulder relaxing down to the ground. Breathe that stretch through the whole left side body. Move back, we'll begin to realign the spine, knees off towards the left when you're ready. Maybe gaze off the right shoulder and then allow for your eyes to close. And then just breathe in here. Maybe doing a little scan of your body. Notice where you're holding tension. And then with each exhalation, let that tension go. Nice. We align. Coming back onto our back. Knees up and into the chest. Arms, hands around knees or shins. And begin to create circles here. And then begin to circle in the other direction. So I'll just reverse that movement. And then gently letting that go. Let's take a few moments in relaxation. We'll come into Shavasana. So the legs can relax, the arms can relax, letting the eyes close. And then just letting your body sink into stillness here. Try to let go of any tension through the eyebrows, through the jaw. Try to feel the back of your head, feel the back of your neck melting into the mouth. Let go of tension through the shoulders, arms and hands. 
Ready, upper, mid, and low back. Letting go of tension. Legs relaxed, feet Allowing for your breath to deepen. Maybe wiggle the fingers. Maybe wiggle through the toes. Transitioning to your side. Coming into a fetal pose for a moment. Maybe create a little pillow with the lower arm for support. Letting the eyes close and just feeling the body taking the shape of the posture. Moving into a seated pose when you're ready. And then as you come to seated, feel free to sit in any position that feels comfy for your body. Bringing your hands into prayer at the heart you would like for Anjali Mudra prayer position. And thanking yourself for practicing yoga this evening. For doing something so good for your mind, body, and spirit. The light within me honors the light within you. Namaste.